Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's talk about yet another five great age-worthy red wines that you and I should be stocking up in our cellars. I hate to break it to you and repeating myself. Only few percent of all wines are made for aging and can actually become better with time. The large majority of wines out there are intended for immediate consumption, while they are still youthful, vibrant and full of fresh, bright fruit. In fact, I have made already two videos about age-worthy red wines, so go and check them out after this video. I will have all the links in the description. However, there are many more regions and wines to cover, especially if we are looking for some hidden gems that can age beautifully, but not necessarily will ruin you financially. As always, I will be leaving the usual suspects Bordeaux and Burgundy out because they deserve videos on their own. So let's go! In the Northern Rhone, where Syrah shines, Saint Joseph appellation is usually overlooked or dare I say even condemned. Yes, Saint Joseph is much larger appellation than Hermitage and Cotroti, making it more challenging to find those hidden gems in terms of terroir and winemakers. But believe me, it is worth exploring, especially if you are looking into the heartland of the original appellation on terraced vineyards. And one more thing, this area will dictate much lower prices than its neighboring villages. Similarly, as with other top appellations, Saint Joseph must be made primarily from Syrah grape variety with small additions allowed of Marsan and Roussain. The best examples I have tasted shows great fruit concentration that is often accompanied by notes of lilac and violets. Tannins are elevated and often firm, especially if the grapes were not distemmed prior, which by the way adds an extra layer to the flavors. But where the true magic lies is freshness in form of mouth-watering and juicy acidity that elevates wine to another level, and that you can only get from top sites of San Joseph. And as expected from every great Syrah wines, these can age from 10 to 20 years gracefully, offering leather, black earth, and peppery notes on the nose, an overall smooth palette. I am saddened to tell you that I have never been in Australia, but I do plan to go there. And now that it has been announced that the next Institute of Masters of Wine Symposium will be held in Adelaide, I will definitely go. But today we are focusing on Cunovara. Wine-wise, Cunovara is famous for its red, iron-rich soils and Cabernet Sauvignon. And most of us know that Cabernet Sauvignon is a grape that in good terroir and good hands is capable of producing not only great wines, but also wines that can age magnificently. Perhaps it is the limited availability of these wines in my country or in Europe in general, but I really like the style and I appreciate the quality. For those who want to argue against saying that some winemakers in Cunavarra are too much relying on manipulations in the winery or oak, I say that has changed now. I find these wines concentrated and powerful, yet also ripe and inviting. They tend to have high levels of polished tannins, which form a beautiful backbone for the ripe, yet never overripe, black fruit flavors of the wine. And I have been fortunate enough to open bottles that are 10 or more years old, and yet they were still packed with dense fruit and vibrancy. So much so that I have started to wonder, maybe I should have left some of those bottles in my wine fridge for later. Southwest France, where Madiran is located, shares many similarities with Bordeaux. It also experiences cooling Atlantic influences and in many appellations, important role is played by the Bordeaux grape varieties. Therefore, this area is worth exploring much deeper. However, this time I want to focus on perhaps lesser-known appellation and quite unique grape variety, namely Madiran and its grape Tannat. Tannat is a rich and powerful grape that produces wines with elevated acidity, deep color and high levels of tannins. It is very easy to remember because its name itself implies tannins, tannat. Of course, the characteristics of the wine will depend on terroir, 
producer and winemaking techniques used. However, these are wines that are best to leave for aging in the bottles to soften their tannin structure, which can still be quite prominent even 20 years later. Nevertheless, examples from sandier soils tend to produce lighter wine styles and micro-oxidation can help soften the tannins, thus making the wines more appealing in their youth. I recently tasted Madiran from the 90s and I was surprised how much life it still possessed. There were almost no signs of development. Madiran wines must be made from minimum 50% of Tanat, but there are producers who make monovarietal Tanat wines. And this should give you some insight into the amount and structure of the Tanat tannins. It is allowed to blend Tana with Cabernet Sauvignon amongst other grapes in order to make it softer. Cabernet Sauvignon to make it softer. Let that sink in. If you know anything about me, you must know that I am in love with the Nebbiolo grape which is responsible for the mighty Barolo and Barbaresco wines. But this is story of yet another native Italian red grape variety that in contrast to Nebbiolo and Sangiovese is often overlooked, Aglianico. It is capable of producing wines of great concentration, depth, and aging potential. The Taurasi appellation, which I am specifically focusing on today, is located in Campania, Italy. Vineyards lie at the elevation of around 400 meters above sea level, and yet the best sites are considered those that are situated even higher. It must be made predominantly from the Alianico grape variety, but other local grapes are allowed as long as they do not exceed 15% of the blend. Taurasi wines are much deeper in color than their northern counterparts and will show off more black and blue fruits rather than red berries. But for me, they often also display earthy, truffly and leathery notes. Due to the elevated tannins and mouth-watering acidity, these wines can age beautifully for 10 or 20 years without losing their focus and precision. Ah, some will say that this is playing too safe, but hear me out. For the longest time, Rioja Reds were released when they were ready to drink. Spanish wines, and especially Rioja wines, were aged in cellars, either in oak barrels or bottles, for years, sometimes even decades, and released only when the winemakers said it was ready to drink. You have the traditional classification system of Crianza, Reserva and Gran Reserva, but we all know that many of the top winemakers were and still are aging their wines way beyond the required minimum. Therefore, at least for me, Rioja wines were always a safe choice when looking for a wine that you knew would be ready to drink. Many winemakers are now only labeling their wines with vintage and are not using any wine aging indications. They are also often in favor of short shorter élevage in oak barrels, which can even be new French oak barriques. And if you get your hands on these wines, you might want to hold them in your cellar for a bit longer. With 10 to 20 years in the bottle aged in your cellar, not the winemaker's cellar, the wine will gain more complexity in form of tertiary aromatics. So here you go, yet another five great age-worthy red wines for your cellar. If you did not find some wines or regions you were looking for, make sure to watch my other two videos in this series and maybe I have mentioned them there. And let me know in the comments which are your favorite age-worthy red or white wines, especially those with great value. I briefly touched on the subject of modern Rioja, if you do like this subject, make sure to watch my other video where I compare Rioja and Rivera del Duero. 